for this week's report. Tips for staying tick free as the weather warms. Team Arts and Music Festival has a new setup, but the same great arts and music. The Alewife Festival kicks off this weekend. The Seacoast Art Association is hosting their exhibit, Primavera, the Art of Spring, to benefit student scholarships. The Special Olympics of New Hampshire is looking for volunteers. And we show you a trailer for our award-winning documentary about dam removal and river restoration. For Exeter TV, I'm Bob Glowacki, and before we get started with the bi-weekly report this week, I'm here in the Swampscott River, right where it meets the Exeter, for the annual herring run. So you may see a lot of seagulls, cormorants, osprey, bald eagle flying around, and it's because the fish are back. There's blueback and alewife river herring swimming upriver from the ocean to the freshwater of the Exeter River where they spawn. So it's a great event. You should come check it out and learn more about it in uh, this week's episode of The Report. So without further ado, let's get started. With warmer weather comes the concern of ticks. The Public Library recently hosted a tick-free New Hampshire event to raise awareness about the risks of ticks and educate the public about how to avoid them. We spoke to our local health department and library staff to learn more about how you can have a tick-free summer. Ticks. Nature's little mistakes have found themselves yet again at the forefront of an impending war, the war on public health. It can be difficult to quantify the unfortunately destructive nature of the tick without asking some people who know a thing or two. We spoke with both James Murray at the Exeter Health and Safety Department and Shelby Lennon from the Exeter Library about the steps they and the community need to take in order to help slow down the spread of this arachnid menace. Lyme disease is the most common probably around these parts and that can actually lead to long-term health impacts from um, general feelings of malaise, general fatigue, uh, swollen lymph nodes, joint pain, and uh, headaches and those can be long-lasting even lifelong in some cases. So if you're going out and about um, it's recommended that you wear pants, long sleeves if you can. So applying insect repellents that contain DEET, uh, treating your clothes with permethrin which is a type of uh, chemical that you use to treat clothes against ticks and mosquitoes. Try to stay in areas that are less dense. Ticks like to hang out in long grass and a lot of foliage you really want to get a firm grasp on the tick with tweezers and pull straight up and apply antiseptics on the on the area afterwards. Over at the library, they've been busy distributing tick kits for those who are taking the extra steps to keep ourselves safe. Shelby Lennon was able to sit down and talk about the efforts they've made to help contain the issue. Often when you come inside, you will remove your clothes and you want to throw them in the washing machine. Um, apparently ticks like the cold and the wet. So you are doing nothing but giving them a party in the washing machine. One of the most important things I think we could all take away from Tick Free New Hampshire and um, proper tick care is how to safely remove them. Um, so we have these little handouts um, that show you want to remove a tick as close to the head, as close to the bite area as possible. At the library, we were giving away free tick removers. Um, over the last week and a half, we were able to um, give away 100 tick removers to people in the community. So at the library, we plan to get more tick remover kits. Um, we will have those at the front adult information desk. Um, we will continue to give them away until we run out again. Um, it's just a very important thing this time of year. You can learn more about the difficulties and precautions one must take in order to handle this menace and learn about ticks at tickfreenewhampshire.org. The Exeter Arts and Music Festival kicks off the summer season on Saturday, May 20th. And while it may look a little different due to the sewer siphon construction in Swayze Parkway, team will still showcase Exeter's great arts and music. Will Tapley has more information about the changes. Local artists and musicians will be back in Exeter on Saturday, May 20th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. for the Exeter Arts and Music Festival. Historically taking place in Swayze Parkway, there are a few changes this year due to the ongoing sewer siphon project blocking part of the parkway. 
delicious food, fun music, and kids' activities are shifting from the parkway to Townhouse Common, located at the corner of Front, Court, and Bow Streets, right up the road from the Town Hall. Bands on the main stage include Tim Parent and the Grim Bros, Marcus Rob Quartet, Woodwind and Whiskey, and Cold Engines. A wide variety of artist vendors will be at the Water Street entrance of Swayze Parkway, as well as tasty treats from Kona Ice, Healthy Nut Snacks, and Daniela's Dandles. For more information about the festival, visit TeamExeter.com or find them on Facebook and Instagram at Town Exeter Arts Music. Tomorrow is the day for the 2023 Alewife Festival in Founders Park. Here's a quick reminder about the event from Gabe Perez. This is your secondary reminder to mark your calendars for the second annual Alewife Festival, happening in Founders Park on May 14th, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. The festival, used as a celebration of the Alewife fish making their migration up the river every spring, has been tucked away for nearly 20 years but recently reopened its not-so-literal doors last year in order to bring in a fresh perspective and celebrations to the little critters that occupy our waters. Newcomers can expect a lot of fun and interesting happenings going on at the festival. Information booths, games, and educational pieces, as well as the raffle you can enter to win cool and interesting prizes. So, once again, May 14th from 9am to 1pm at Founders Park. Be there for the fun, the laughs, the games, and most importantly, the fish. For more information, you can go to ExeterNewHampshire.gov and look up the 2023 Alewife Festival. With spring in the air, the Seacoast Art Association's Primavera, the Art of Spring exhibit, is taking place in the Town Hall Art Gallery. Will Tapley has more about the exhibit. Welcome to Primavera, the Art of Spring. An enchanting exhibition brought to you by the Seacoast Artists Association. Immerse yourself in the captivating world of Primavera, showcasing the remarkable talent of local artists. Located in the upstairs gallery at the Exeter Town Hall on 10 Front Street, this is an event you don't want to miss. From May 6th to May 21st, join us between 12 p.m. and 4 p.m. to experience a vibrant collection of paintings and photos that embody the spirit of spring, capturing its essence and beauty. By attending Primavera, you're not only indulging in artistic inspiration, but also supporting a noble cause. The proceeds from this exhibition will benefit the Seacoast Artists Association Scholarship Fund, which provides financial support to aspiring young artists in our local schools. Visit seacoastartist.org for more information. Special Olympics of New Hampshire is looking for volunteers and sent over this video for residents to learn more about how they can get involved. Special Olympics New Hampshire is back. In 2023, Special Olympics will be offering a full schedule of sports training and competition events serving more than 3,000 athletes in the Granite State. We need volunteers statewide to make our more than 65 local programs work. Are you interested in enriching the life of an athlete? Let's get you hooked up with a one-day event or local program that's near you. We're everywhere in New Hampshire with lots of volunteer opportunities. Go to SONH.org for more information. With the Alewhite Festival this weekend and fish currently swimming upriver, we wanted to invite our viewers to watch our award-winning documentary, What We Have in Its Place. The short film tells the story of the river restoration that took place in the summer of 2016 with the removal of the Great Dam in downtown Exeter. To end the report, here's a quick trailer to give you a taste of the film. Once the vote had been taken and they decided to remove the dam, it was decided that it was really important to make sure that the dam was not forgotten. Sometimes we get labeled as uh, destroying history when we take out one of these dams. And I, I think it's something quite different than that because there were Native Americans that fished there on those banks for these fish, the same kind of fish, thousands of, for thousands of years, thousands of years before us. The memory you have of a dam is a wonderful memory. It's a memory of your childhood. Don't dismiss it, don't, don't, don't leave it. But look at what we have in this place and embrace that also.
That does it for this week's report. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to help us spread the word. We'll be back on May 26th for the next edition of the show. For Exeter TV, I'm Bob Glowacki, and this has been the Exeter Bi-Weekly Report. Have a good weekend, everybody.